Well, uh, very good afternoon to everyone. I um, will keep a lot of the detail of my story out of what I'm going to share in the next few minutes. Um, but what I'll focus on is how I became a Christian, how I came to know the Lord. Now, I will just give you a very, very brief uh, background on who I am. I was born in Zambia, which is a country in Africa, uh, almost Central Africa, and I was born uh, to a mother and father. Um, we lived there for a few years, then we moved to uh, Kenya. I have a, an older brother called Victor in my family, and then in 1980, my parents split up and they decided they wanted to go to Zimbabwe. And they settled in this country, Zimbabwe, which is near South Africa, um, in 1980. So from 1980, I grew up in schools and I went to uh, some good government schools and I learned uh, not only about sport and uh, education, but I got involved also with the things of God. I became an international sportsman. I played this game called cricket for eight seasons. I played from uh, 1995 through to uh, 2003. In 2003, I did a political protest in Zimbabwe at the World Cup, which is the biggest tournament in cricket and uh, I received uh, death threats, so I had to leave Zimbabwe. And I've been in England for uh, nine years now, almost. <clears throat> but let me tell you why I did the protest. I did the protest because I became a Christian. And I became a Christian when I was 16 years old. Um, the reason I became a Christian is quite complicated, but I suppose you would say it's because I decided that the truth lay with the Christian message. When I was very young, I heard many theories as to why or how human beings came into the world. And of course, in science, we're told that we evolved over billions and billions of years. I didn't believe that because I don't see how nothing can create everything. I just thought there must be a divine being who is greater than creation to have made creation. But I think I was afraid of this being because if he was so big that he could make everything, I was afraid that maybe he would be horrible to me because I had heard of this place called hell. <laughs> and I knew that I wasn't a good person. Now, I wasn't a bad person because I compared myself to other people who were worse than me. You understand what I mean? I looked at murderers, I looked at rapists, I looked at these thieves, and I thought, well, I haven't done that, so I'm not so bad. But then that all changed when I heard a few messages. I heard some messages in church that, as has been mentioned already, God is holy, and even one sin, one lie, one thought of pride in your heart, one time that you stole, even if it's a small thing, one time you hated someone, one time you swore at someone, that's enough so that you don't go to heaven. So what is heaven? Well, let me say this. I was reading my Bible when I was a young boy, and I discovered that God, the creator of everything, this incredible place called Earth, where we know that this is the only place in the universe where life is. We have searched for other places for life, but, but I discovered this God who created everything, actually through his Bible, has said that he loves the whole world. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life, can live forever. See, the problem is, the world we live in now is a broken world. It's a world that's full of sin, pain, death. 
But God didn't make it like that in the beginning. This is what I discovered. God had made a perfect world. But all of us, but in particular our first parents, sinned. They rebelled against God. They have passed on that nature to us. So we, as human beings, also go our own way. We don't want to listen to God's rules. We don't want to live for God. So we do things that are wrong. There are many ways you can do things that are wrong. One, by breaking commands. Two, by not doing good things you're supposed to do, like love your neighbor or forgive or, or, or love your enemies or turn the other cheek or give someone who's thirsty a drink of water, or give them clothes, or visit people in prison. Those are all wrongdoings. And because of those things, we deserve punishment. In this country, if you break the law, you get punished. You go to prison, or you pay a fine. Because the legal system means that if you do the crime, you do the time. But God is the same. If you break his commands, someone must pay. And the beautiful message of God's love for humanity is that God loved the whole world. Not, when he says the world, he doesn't mean the planet <laughs> or trees or birds. He means people. God loves you. And he loved me. But when I was 16, I didn't know that it was personal, that he was interested in me. Me, Henry, he knows my name, and he knows your name. He knows everything that you have ever experienced in your life. He knows the good, he knows the bad. He knows your mistakes, and in spite of that, he still wants you, and he still loves you. I heard that message when I was late in my 16th year. I went to a Christian youth camp where I heard that, yes, Although I deserved eternal separation from God, although I deserved hell and punishment forever, Jesus, God as a human being, God in human flesh, had saved the day. He'd come to earth, he'd lived a perfect life, and he had taken my place and your place, which means that you can be reconciled to God, which means you can have a new start, which is what I did. And the way I got my new start was, one, I had to believe that God was real. A lot of people in this day and age do not believe that God is real. But I want to tell you today, with everything I have inside of me, God exists. He is real. The second thing you need to do, as I did when I was 16, is you need to realize that we are separated from God by our sins. So we need to be saved. And the way we receive salvation is by placing our faith in the fact that Jesus dying on a cross is sufficient to knock down the barrier that separates us from God. And what you do is you just ask God to come into your life and to forgive you of the things that you've done. And he will honor that prayer. He doesn't care what country you come from. He doesn't care what color you are. He doesn't care what language you speak. He doesn't respect any of those things that we as human beings respect. See, we think you've got to be a celebrity or you've got to be rich or you've got to have a popular name. God doesn't care about those things. He just wants people who are humble enough to cry out to him and say, God, I want to be saved. And if you decide to do that, God will receive you into his family and he will forgive you of your sins. So you need to ask. You need to ask God for forgiveness. And I did. I was 16. I've now been a Christian for 19 years. And I've discovered that having peace with our Heavenly Father, with our God, with our Creator, is the most wonderful thing that you can have in life. Knowing that you are going to heaven, that your sins are forgiven, is incredible. It's tremendous. And you know what? You can have that. I'm glad Tim has decided that he wants to follow Jesus. And today with his baptism, of course, he's publicly stating that he wants Jesus to be his God. You know what? You can do it. You don't have to do it publicly just yet, but you can do it in your heart. And the way you start is by just
believing that God is real and asking Him to come into your heart and to forgive you of your sins. And I want to tell you, if you earnestly pray that, if you ask the Lord, He will come in and He will wash away all your sins, all the bad things you've done. He will forgive you of them and you can have a brand new start, just like Tim is having today. And of course, baptism will be explained later, what it, what it means, the significance of you dying to your old life. But ultimately, for me, I got my new start at the age of 16, and I've had interesting experiences along life, this road, and God has been with me ever since. I've had some miraculous uh, experiences where God has saved me, and uh, I can't tell you them because of time, but they are in my book, and I've written my book, and I've told my story, and I share my story a lot around the country, telling people that there is a God out there whom, if you call his name, he will come and save you. In fact, that's taken from the book of Romans in the Bible. The Bible says, all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I wonder, are you saved? Do you know where you would go if you were to die tonight? Have you called on the right name? Because there are many names you can call on out there, but there's only one way we can get to, G to, to God, and that's through Jesus. There's only one way to get to the one true living God. There are many idols out there. There are many different religions that say, well, this is the way to get to God. But God himself has said there's no other way but through my son. Have you made that decision? Have you trusted the Lord Jesus for your eternity so that when you die, you know where you're going? I encourage you today to think about that. Give your life to him. You can do it even today, right now.